You're listening to the A Bit From Within podcast with Felicia Marty. We put stuff on our back that not only do we expect ourselves to fulfill and do and carry and succeed in, but we also put on ourselves the things we assume that other people expect out of us. And sometimes that can be the heaviest part and it can make us go crazy. Hello there and welcome to the Up Bit From Within podcast with me, Felicia Marty. If you are new around here, you should know that I am a self-care specialist as well as a certified astrologer and I work with people every day to help them feel more comfortable owning who they truly are and where they are in their life right now. It is with sometimes little changes, even of our mind, that can lead to big shifts in our lives. So my biggest passion in life is helping others learn how to really love and cherish themselves. Because I don't know about you, but I have struggled with that feeling of actually feeling like I love and accept myself. And it is so much through my work as an astrologer and connecting with other people and doing real mindfulness practice that are not always comfortable but are always helpful that I have learned and continue to learn what it means to love myself. So every week on the podcast, I am here to share a little bit from within where I'm at on my journey right now, what I'm working through, what I'm trying to figure out, share that with you so that you hopefully feel valid in what you're going through. Maybe you don't feel so alone. Maybe you get a little bit inspired. Whatever it brings, it is my hope and intention that you benefit somehow from this time listening to this episode. And before we dive into it all, I just want to remind you that if you are somebody who is looking for a little bit more self-transformation work in your life or a little bit more self-acceptance, I would love for you to check out some of the many resources that I have available on my website, abitfromwithin.com. There I have a really nice selection of different kind of ritual guides. I have information teaching you how to use the lunar cycle for self-transformation, also for just like deeper self-care moments throughout the month. And of course, as an astrologer, I do offer readings. So if you've been looking to treat yourself or invest in something that can help you understand more about yourself and the different energies that are working in your own life, I would love to kind of reveal your natal chart to you and help you have all these new light bulb moments and uncover the amount of compassion that you can have for yourself. So if you are interested, you can get that um, from my website. And of course, if you are interested in more of like a community and and an ongoing conversation, we do have a Patreon page as well. Um, It is very much around meditation and yoga, as well as our monthly ritual guide that is an actual unique guide paired with what's happening astrologically. So, so many people are a huge fan of this raving about it, giving him inspiration each and every month. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, you can always let me know if you have any questions or you can check out our patreon.com slash a bit from within. Thank you for letting me share a little bit on that. It is always a little uncomfortable for me to do the self promotion, but it is such a big part of, well, not only being a business owner, but also being proud of what you do and feeling like you're allowed to take up space, which is something that I'm working on and something that I think is uncomfortable for many of us. And it shows up in different ways, right? Like it could be, you know, maybe you're in a safe of a place of self-promotion and you feel shy to put yourself out there because maybe you know what it feels like to be on the other side of that and feel like you're being solicited to, or feel like you're being sold to. And nobody likes that feeling. And so you don't want to put other people in that position. So you automatically assume I shouldn't share what's going on for me. And that's something that I've had to realize that more often than not, when my message gets into the hands of people who are like-minded, why do I assume that they wouldn't want to hear what I have to say or what I'm doing or more about more of my offers? And we kind of have to check ourselves in in that moment now i think where we can really look at our own lives is we start to maybe observe how often we're letting our assumptions 
rule what we believe to be true about other people or about the situations we move through. So I do this all the time. I'll, you know, not ask my partner for things that I need from him because I assume he doesn't want to do it or that he's preoccupied or that he's busy with other things. Sometimes in my life as a photographer, you know, I'll be shooting a wedding for somebody and I'll know that, you know, every once in a while, especially at weddings, you can get a little burnt out of being needed. I don't even want to say that they get tired of taking photos because I think our company does a really good job of keeping things moving. Um, But on a wedding day, like you can be, you're pulled in a lot of different directions. You need to, you know, get yourself ready. You need to make sure things are done. You need to stand in front of the camera. We need to go get you ready. We need to do a bathroom break. We need to greet people. We need to get you through the buffet line. Oh, you need to use the photo booth. You need to do your first dance. You know, like there's so many things that you have to do um, if you're having a more traditional wedding. And so one of the things that I used to really struggle with that I was, I've been reflecting on recently is feeling like I don't want to inconvenience them. I'm going to assume that they don't want more pictures taken, that I shouldn't bring them out under the twinkle lights or that I shouldn't do um, maybe like a closing moment of their video. I should just leave them alone because I don't want to bother them. And what I've learned over the years is never to assume always ask the question and it's just a question. If they say no, it's not the end of the world. It's no problem. But if they say yes, they would have missed out on that opportunity if I would have made the decision for them. Because that's basically what your assumption is doing is sometimes it is making the decision for other people, which is the thing we shouldn't do. And I've had it so many times where I've felt fear inside of myself to approach somebody about something, like whether it's a client about, you know, the photo at the end of the night, or it could even be like calling up your best friend. Like you really want to talk to them, but you don't want to inconvenience them. So you're like, well, I don't know what they're doing. So I just won't call them. But by not even putting it out there, you're just, you're making that decision. You're saying you don't get to choose, but it's okay let the couple choose, give them the option, present it in a kind way. You know, if you call your friend, let them choose. They can choose to answer it or not. And that's okay too. Um, Of the many things in our life, as we move through our life, it is so important to recognize when we're doing that. And then maybe even to pause and consider why, because you might begin to start to uncover some major limiting beliefs that don't have any business in being there and that are just like frankly not serving you now kind of going back to you know a lot of the ways that I'm working on this in my own life do have to do with putting myself out there because here I am on my podcast and having offers and I've been on TikTok sharing different kinds of astrology advice on TikTok talking about a lot of the astrological and lunar stuff and one thing that I've been doing is I've been challenging myself like to try and talk more about my offers on TikTok because I have a tendency to just want to share the heart of the message and not tell people what else I do or how else they can interact with me. And it's uncomfortable right now. It is something I know I'll get used to, but as of right now, it's uncomfortable. And what I noticed as I was filming a video today is that as I was describing my offer, I was literally shaking my head back and forth. Like as if I were telling people like, no, don't buy it. Don't visit my website. Don't go to the link in the bio. Don't shop from me. And I obviously I wasn't consciously thinking that, you know, I'm putting myself out there in my mind. It feels like my intention is like, yeah, put yourself out there, grow your business. Like this is awesome. Like you're so proud of what you've built. And yet if you look at my the body language, there's still so much fear there. And it was, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it, although it is a little bit embarrassing, but more from the sense that it's important that we actually look at like, are we in alignment or not? And if I'm being honest, and I'm sure you can tell, it's like, I'm not fully in alignment with it because there's parts of me that still feel like either, I don't know what's underneath it. Maybe that I need to work harder in order to deserve success. Maybe that I need to do more in order to be um, 
valuable to other people. Maybe I'm just worried about the sense of rejection. Like what if people visit it and then it's not good enough? You know, there's so many limiting beliefs that are stacking up in my mind. And, you know, it's obviously something that I'm addressing and working on. You know, what I actually did is I I stopped and I re-recorded the video and I'm like, you can't have that body language. And it was more than just forcing myself to not nod or shake my head. No, it was more just taking that deep breath and letting the fear wash out of me, like releasing that a little bit. Okay. You're a little bit worried about rejection. You're feeling a little bit anxious. There's something inside of you that is, you know, subconsciously saying no, but as you film this, like, let your vibration be yes. Let it be yes. If maybe even not yes, let it not be no, (laughs) right? Maybe that's a step towards yes. Um, And so I did that. And that is making a step. Now, what I've noticed for many of us, especially the more that I work one-on-one with people, is that we have this tendency to feel like, oh my gosh, I've, I've realized what my limiting belief is, or I've realized where my vulnerability is, and now I just want to break it. I want to make it so that that thing doesn't exist, and I want to put it behind me. It's kind of like, actually, when I, I come back to this analogy a lot, it's that we expect these light bulb moments from ourselves. We expect like, oh, I found the light switch. I just need to turn it on. And I think that in our world where things need to feel so immediate, we're so used to this sense of immediacy and delivery right away. It is very hard to wait. And not only is it hard to wait, but it's very hard or challenging to feel like you can be in a process that unfolds. And This is one of the most important things that we can learn, especially with our own personal development that, you know, going back to my example, I can't expect myself to just, oh, there's that limited belief. You just need to put it behind you and never have that again. If I looked at it that way, well, one, if I could do that, don't you think I would have done that by now? (laughs) And secondly, It's not just arriving at the moment of success that matters. It's not what means something. And, you know, we always talk about how, like, the pleasure of is in the journey. I don't actually think that's the phrase, but you guys know what I'm trying to say is like the the joy is in the journey. Is that the phrase? Um, And there is something to that. And it's not just about achieving something or succeeding in something. In fact, how many times in your life have you had those moments where you get the promotion or the thing you've been working really hard for and all of a sudden you have it? And then instead of feeling like you're on top of the world, it's almost like there's this feeling of, okay, now what? And so I think it's so important for us to kind of peel that back. And especially when we're talking about limited beliefs or we're wanting to change things or um, even something like the assumptions that we have, because those, again, those are all paired with our fears and our blockages and all of that, that we take a moment to not approach ourselves with this idea of like, you must change now. It's more like, okay, the process of change can begin now. And I honestly think that will take us so much further than expecting sudden change out of ourselves, sudden and unsustainable change. Because again, most of the things you're going to realize and catch yourself doing the more observant you are, you're going to realize that those are the things that you're doing subconsciously that you're only going to realize and see if you're being aware and if you're being mindful and if, if you're kind of looking for it. So with all of that said, this is actually a perfect introduction into the astro check-in of the week, which is where we start to talk about what's happening astrologically. And I will say that we are coming off of the autumn equinox, which happened last Thursday on September 22nd. So yes, fall is officially in the air. And we are also coming off of a new moon, which was on Sunday, the 25th. And this new moon is in Libra. So 
Needless to say, we are officially into Libra season. Sun moved into Libra at the equinox. Now we had the new moon in Libra. So Libra energy is strong right now. So I thought this week for the astro check-in, I can remind you of a couple of things that would be good to do throughout the month ahead that would be in a line with Libra self-care, like Libra self-care ideas that you can do throughout the month. So the first thing that I want you to think of is putting a little bit of effort and intention into making things beautiful. This has a lot to do with the Venus influence of Libra. Venus rules Libra. And there is something about Libra season that makes us want to make things beautiful. In fact, I think it is no um, coincidence that so many people love to decorate for fall more so than well, maybe Christmas gets a little bit more of that, but it's it's for different reasons. Like people love the coziness of fall to pull in the warm colors, to really start to, you know, use lights and candles for ambient lighting as the days start to get darker. Um, I even feel like sometimes those fall sunsets are extra beautiful. So taking time to not only enjoy beauty, like taking time to watch the sunsets or even to like go to the art museum to appreciate the the art the beauty of life whether it's out in nature or something that somebody created um even and then of course making your own space beautiful is there a place in your own home or your office that you can put a little bit more effort into kind of zhuzhing it up or refreshing it or just little things that aren't necessarily focused on making it more useful, but really making it more enjoyable. I think that is the main thing with Libra is it has a way of knowing how to make things more enjoyable and fun. So try to embrace that by putting a little effort into that. Now, the next one will be not shocking at all to anyone if you know anything about Libra, but we're going to talk about balance and what does balance look like as self-care. Well, right now, as Libra season begins, we have these equal amounts of daytime and nighttime. And so we're going to kind of look at that same inspiration out in nature with the light and think about how can we find the balance on the inside. I've been really encouraging people this new moon to not necessarily think about manifesting with this new moon, but really work on setting intentions around unmet needs. Because usually it is our, in our unmet needs that we need balance, that the support in those areas would bring us into better balance. So this is a great time to look at all of the areas of your life. You know, what is the balance between work and play? Um, even what is the balance in your body between like exertion and rest? What does the balance look like in relationships? Are you having a good give and take? Um, even in your wellness, you know, are, do you have time to put into your health? And, and whatever priorities need to be happening in your life. I mean, sometimes you're just going to be a little bit more in survival mode. And so the ways that you're going to be looking at bringing things into balance are going to be much different than when you're in a place where you have a lot more freedom and you can do a lot of different things for yourself. So always keep that in mind. But balance is a wonderful thing you can do throughout the entire month ahead. Now, this one is going to be hit or miss for you. But I want that's the whole point of having different self-care throughout the month that is inspired by the zodiac sign is that some months it's going to be very in tune with who you are and how you are and other months it's going to push you out of your comfort zone and honestly create balance in your life so the next one is get creative okay Libra is an air sign and all of our air signs. So Gemini, Aquarius, and Libra, they are all highly creative and intelligent um, signs. So as we move into Libra, this is a time to get creative. And of course, a lot of people associate creativity with art. And we did talk about, you know, appreciating beautiful things. But I actually like to think of creativity as approaching something with a fresh perspective. 
you know, can you get creative with your problems? If there's something that's not working, you know, we talked about those unmet, unmet needs. How can you get creative about solving them? You have to look at things in a unique way, a way that you've never looked at them before. Kind of like thinking outside of the box. And another piece of the creativity puzzle is connecting with intuition. Because you know, when you're using intuition, it's because you can't necessarily see the answer in front of you. You can't feel like you can't solve for it just based on fact alone. Because if you could, you would have already thought of it. So how can you get more creative? And what does that process of creativity look like for you? This is something that can be super fun for us and also a little bit challenging. But you know, is it where do you get your best ideas? Do you get them when you're getting ready for bed? Do you get them first thing in the morning when you're, do you get them while you're cooking? Do you get it while you're driving? Do you get them while you're out on a walk in nature? Do you get it when you're talking to a friend? Where do your best ideas come up with? Um, When do you come up with those ideas? And how can you put a little bit more effort and intention into creating space so that you can have some of those moments? And then finally, this one is big for all of us and something we can all use, but it is just clearing your head. Um, as I mentioned, Libra has a lot of creative and innovative energy. It also is very highly intellectual and intelligent, very much of the mind. There's a lot of mental effort associated with Libra. And so in that vein, like we don't want to get so in our heads that we lose the ability to do what we were just talking about, you know, connecting with intuition. So you have to be able to clear your head. And there's a lot of ways you can do this. Maybe those, these are going to be maybe some similar examples to what I just said about like, where do you go to get your ideas? Because often it's when we clear our head that new ideas pop in. So, but in, if you're just even just focusing on clearing your head, you could do that through journaling. You could do that through singing. You can do it through going on a walk, dancing, um, meditation, reflection, and, and this is the part where I think you can kind of lean into the things that feel more natural for you. Um, or you can just do something really off the wall and do something totally different that you don't normally do because we do love novelty. Um, but I think all of these ideas throughout the month ahead, maybe you just want to assign one of those things to each of the next four weeks coming up. Um, but just keep plant those little seeds in the back of your mind and just remember that throughout this month up until Scorpio season, that it's a really good time to focus on these things. And with the new moon coming right now, it's a good time to set those intentions. So hopefully this inspires you a little bit to do that. And hopefully you feel like you can make the most of the new moon vibes, whether you were able to do that before you tuned into this podcast or whether you want to do it now, it's never too late. I mean, actually, if we're at the full moon, it is then, then it's too late to celebrate the new moon. (laughs) But even then you're not too far away from the next cycle. So, you know, today I just, honestly, I had such a beautiful day today. I'm recording this on Sunday, the day of the new moon partially why I chose to record today instead of on Mondays when I usually record is because I was just feeling so delightful (laughs) and I wanted to stay in this energy um, when I spoke with you and shared my heart this week because Mondays the past few weeks have been really hard for me and actually I guess that this is part of my own creativity wanting to change things up that aren't working really well and I don't think that this is like maybe an across the board thing like I don't think there's anything wrong with Mondays but I do think that while I have a lot of work on my plate that when I want to be clear-headed and speak from my heart and not come from a place where I'm overwhelmed with of the mental load of everything that it's better for me to come here and share my heart on maybe a Sunday night or I have recorded on a Monday night too but just in the evening when I'm not kind of in the day-to-day hustle and bustle and today was just such a lovely day and to be honest when I woke up this morning I did not think that it was going to be This was mostly because yesterday I shot a wedding and when I wake up after shooting a wedding, I, I always like, 
it's a it's a whole process. It's like my body hurts, my feet hurt, my mind hurts. I feel like I don't always sleep very well after a wedding because I kind of stay in the mode of the wedding and kind of did I get everything? Did I forget anything? Did what, did they have a good time? Do I have all the cards? You know, like I'm still in a mental checklist a little bit. And so my sleep gets kind of affected. And I woke up just kind of feeling like, ooh, not my best self. But then, you know, the morning went on and we had our live yoga class through the Patreon today. And as we sat down and we met, we were talking a little bit about balance as the group. We're talking about the new moon and it's always just so nice to connect with beautiful people who are smiling back at you and you get to do something as beautiful as just do yoga together. So when we got to the yoga piece, you know, I wanted to put together a class that was not only just about balancing, but also about finding the flow. In fact, it connects back to a lot of what I was saying earlier around, you can't just expect yourself to arrive at balance. Like you can't just be like, I'm going to go on my yoga mat mat, and I'm just going to be in balance. And that's just how it's going to be. There's more of this process of arriving with balance as opposed to having it or not. I don't know if that makes sense. Something that I understand from my own practice. And so we created, I created this um, standing series that we did today, kind of moving between um, like a high knee and a a lunge, humble warrior. And then of course, um, warrior three, we did a little bit of standing figure four. It was really I thought it was really fun. It was a little bit challenging for a gentle class. I mean, not crazy, but, um, you know, get your heart rate up just a tiny bit, get some heat building in your body. And what was interesting that I, I didn't expect this from the class, but it was so grounding. How funny that a standing series where we're kind of flying through the air could be so grounding. But I swear that that class and just meeting with the people of the Patreon, it just set a different tone. It really shifted things for me. And the rest of the day was just such a beautiful day. And um, I had a work, I had a photo session this afternoon and it was like, it was like God just knew that I needed to chat with those people today at this time. It was like the things that they're going through in their life and the things I'm going through in my life, like it just felt like, whew, like we really needed to connect and and see each other and have those conversations because it was so important for my heart and it just made me have a new appreciation for where, you know, I've been at in my life for the past year. It made me reflect on... I guess the journey of being in survival mode and not having answers and doing the best you can and the importance of like grace. (laughs) And, um, I don't know. It was just what, it was a really beautiful moment. And, you know, the rest of the day, it just, there was space and it's something that I've been deeply desiring in my own life is just space And that's the word that I have been really putting effort and intention into creating more of in my life is space. And I don't always get it, but I'm really trying to find it each and every day and make the most of it because I know I need it right now. I think in general, I think a lot of us need more space. There are so many things that we feel like are being demanded of us that we have to figure out and fix and show up for and get done. And sometimes we just need to be separate from that. So whether you find it through your yoga mat or whether you find it through listening to podcasts, you find it through sitting in the quiet. Um, Sometimes I find space like just away from other people. I mean, that, I guess it does make sense, but feeling like I can walk into, you know, like right now I'm in my closet and the door is shut and I feel space. Um, 
sometimes we we forget that we forget how important it is just to give our and it doesn't have to be you know locked away somewhere it could be in a really cute little patio corner with your journal and a cup of tea like you can find space there you can find space out on a walk you can find space I mean honestly sometimes even when I am like driving with Dave or like get crawling into bed like I'm thinking of moments that I'm with another person like in my physical space I have to ask myself like what does it feel like to give myself space right now how can I be in my own moment and rooted down um so this whole idea of space is just something that I've been really really in making intention for and I've been trying to balance the fact that like my life is really busy right now and honestly <laughs> I think it was on Wednesday that I had a massive breakdown um like full-on crying losing it a little bit like end of the world is how I felt I was I was probably being a little bit dramatic too but I was just feeling beyond overwhelmed with the things that are on my plate right now and just feeling like there's not enough time and there's so much to do and you know you just you get caught up in that moment and I was talking with my best friend just having this nervous breakdown and I think what was coming up for me is this feeling that like, is this ever going to end? Like, am I going to be caught in this space forever? Am I going to always feel like there's just so much going on and I'm, I'm not enough and there's not enough time and I don't have space to deal with the unpredictable things and adulting is so hard and everything feels so bad, you know, like you're just in that, I was in that place. And here I am a couple days later not crying, feeling my feet beneath me, feeling rooted down, smiling. Uh, and it's such a reminder that things always change. Even when you are in really dark times, even when you can't see the way out, eventually the sun will set on that moment and a new day begins again. And it doesn't always turn into like the great, a great day. But things do shift and change and come to completion. So I had to share that piece because I think it's a very important reminder in the broad s scope of things. But the other thing that I thought was so important that she reminded me of, my best friend, as I was having this breakdown, she's like, you're allowed to put things down. And I had the follow conversation, follow up conversation with my therapist about this. And she reminded me the same thing. Like you're allowed to put things down. You do not have to carry everything around with you. You get to decide what you carry around. And I do feel like so many of us can relate to this, that we feel we put all of this stuff on our own back, not only, and this ties perfectly back to the beginning of this podcast, we put stuff on our back that not only you know, do we expect ourselves to fulfill and do and carry and succeed in, but we also put on ourselves the things we assume that other people expect out of us. And sometimes that can be the heaviest part and it can make us go crazy. It can make us cry uncontrollably. It can make us physically break down to get sick, to be overwhelmed, to have panic attacks. And I think one of the best things that we can do is just like with anything else in life is we can, we can purge what's on our back. So we can purge, you know, our closet. We can go through things and we can decide what is it that we need to keep and where can we lighten the load? And this is hard work. It's especially hard to do by yourself. And it is a not recommended to do it when you're feeling super vulnerable and maybe not so clear headed. But at some point you, you do, you kind of have to go through the list and say, what, where can I lighten the load? What can I either ask for somebody else's help with? What can I just straight up put on the back burner? Cause it's just not a priority right now. 
where can I maybe trim back? Like I can still do it, but maybe I can't expect the same thing out of myself with this as if I had more time, or more resources or more support or more energy. Because just like you could buy higher quality things if you have more money, you know, more resources, if you had more time and energy to put towards something, you could probably create a better end product for yourself, right? Um, The work that you're doing around it might be better or might be more fulfilling or it might be more creative, And if you don't have those things, why are you expecting that same high-end result? That's where there's a misalignment. And so you have to take a nice deep breath sometimes. This is what I've been doing, taking that nice deep breath and just realizing we only have so much time and resource and we, we have to decide where that goes, who it serves, and what we're getting done. And we have to be able to be more reasonable with ourselves. In fact, that's an area that I feel like I've been out of balance lately is in scheduling myself so much and having so much that I have to show up for and execute and do that I don't have space for the unpredictable. And guess what? If there's one thing that is certain in all of our lives is that we are going to have unpredictable things that come up, especially during a Mercury retrograde that are going to be flying at us. And we're going to have to figure out how to incorporate those things. So again, that goes back to my intention around space. If I had more space, then I'd have more ability to be flexible with the unpredictable. So these, I guess all of this is just to say, this is the hodgepodge of what I've been thinking about lately. And I've been really thinking that most of the time, what I regret is feeling as though I need to be all things to all people and carry the weight of the world around on my shoulders. It is when I can step back from that and I say, yeah, when I was doing that and I didn't get to go to bed early or I didn't get to eat dinner on the couch and watch reality TV for an hour. I don't know. That's not like a fully fleshed out thought, but it's just an example. When I didn't get to meet myself in a place of joy or relaxation, I regret doing that because I didn't gain anything back from it. And I think we we struggle with this in our lives. We're trying to make our boss happy or our parents happy or our kids happy or our partner happy or we're and our, our colleagues happy. We're spinning our wheels trying to make other people happy. And we forget that we should be on that list too. We should be making ourselves happy. And honestly, this is again, this is perfect for this Libra season because Libra is not just about ourself. It's also about other, but it's also about having the right balance between the two because we don't want to get over out of over over out of balance is it's the only word that can come out of my mouth. I'm just going to roll with it. We don't want to get to the point where we are codependent or overly dependent on other people. We're pleasing other people and we forget our own needs. Just like we don't want to be so self-absorbed and so into our own way and only being able to see ourselves and make ourselves happy that we forget that other, we're hurting other people in the process. There has to be a balance there. So perfect time to think about this and to remember that your needs matter too if you're if you lean towards the other side and if you're forgetting that I I don't think many people who listen to this podcast would be in that other bucket but if you happen to be then remember to consider other people too so I know this is a little all over the place today but again it's this moment of self-compassion I have to have for for myself and say, am I doing the best that I can right now? Yes. If you guys are listening to this, you should know that right now, if you couldn't tell from the the rest of what I said is like, even though I'm feeling okay in this moment, like I'm in a little bit of a survival mode. Um, My wedding photography business did 10 weddings in September and we're doing eight in October. And while that is less than it has been the past couple of years, it's a lot for me right now while I transition the business and while I, you know, we have our household, my partner has medical issues and 
while I am working on growing the business and finishing my um, astrology studies and so many other things. So the, what you're hearing right now is my moment of self-compassion saying like, there's part of me that wishes things were a little bit more buttoned up. I'm feeling that kind of critical voice coming in. And instead of just ending this and beating myself up for it, I'm trying a different approach by sharing my vulnerability with you and not for, not for you to rush and, you know, say anything about if it was bad or if it was good. I, I don't need the validation. It's not, or at least it's not why I'm sharing it. Why I'm sharing it back is just this moment of honesty that I'm not going to collapse into that, that instead I'm going to give myself grace, that I've done what I can here today, and that it is enough. It is enough for today, and there will always be an opportunity in the future for it to be better or for it to change or to have more of my own time, my resources, my energy, but for today, this is exactly what it needed to be. So if there is anything like that in your life that you need to have a similar self-talk, I hope that you give that to yourself because you deserve it. And if I could give it to you for you, I would. You could just imagine my voice being that cheerleader in your ear, um, helping you to remember that. As we close here, we will do a card drawing so that we can take moment see how the universe wants to contribute today to today's conversation i'm using the affirmators love and relationship stack i thought it'd be perfect for libra season hmm. wait and see Thoughts love to wander into assumptions and race ahead to the future. But what if you told them to cool their jets and just chill for a sec? Today, you get to put your mental chatter on pause to take a deep breath and simply wait and see how things play out before you let your mind run a marathon of imagined scenarios. Wait. And you'll see that waiting and seeing was a lot more productive than wondering and worrying. I love it. And I think it is the perfect reminder for so many of us as we head into a new week, into a new lunar month, into a new season, that it's not always about accomplishing and achieving and doing. Sometimes it's just about being in the moment and watching things unfold and being a part of it. So with that, we'll end today's episode. I am wishing you a wonderful new week ahead. Thank you for joining me today and until next time. <laughs>